Okay, everyone, my name is Chelsea. This is my husband, Dan. Welcome to Little Mountain Ranch. We're really happy to have you here with us today. We wanted to give you an update on where we're at with the Pantry Challenge. We are participating with the three in the Three Rivers uh, Pantry Challenge. Jessica from Three Rivers Homestead puts on a challenge every January and February. And the challenge is that we eat out of our pantry. The rules of it can really depend on your own personal circumstances, but we, what we've chosen to do is to not go to the grocery store or eat out at all for two months. And we're exactly a month in, and we thought we would give you a bit of an update on our thoughts about it up until this point. The biggest thing that I have noticed as far as the pantry challenge goes is that I feel like I'm being a bit more creative with cooking and a little bit more deliberate with using up some of the things that we need to use up around here, like our rice and our beans. And we have a lot of meat that we need to get through as well. So I feel like I'm being a bit more deliberate with that. As far as uh, the rest of it goes, I haven't really noticed a difference um, spending outside of the home until three days ago, because I haven't been feeling well for a few weeks and I really wanted to order in food a couple days ago. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> we were in town and I was like, oh, I just want to order something. Uh, you had an angry moment. <laughs> angry moment. <laughs> you did. <laughs> I was frustrated. So, I just want to order in pizza and not like dinner. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I'm embarrassed, but yeah. Well, was... we, were, we were getting home late too, though. Yeah, that's true. We were getting home late that day and I hadn't done good planning. Um, as far as making sure that we had something that was going to be easy to make when we got home. So I was feeling a bit frustrated about that. I would say that's probably changed to where I'm a lot better at making sure that we have what we need if we're going to be out, making sure there's a meal made for when we get home. This is in the slow cooker or whatever. Mm. What would you say are your biggest kind of takeaways so far? Mm. So far, I, so I, I really like eating like this. There's a few things I've noticed like just on a personal level that you probably wouldn't notice because you you eat you, you spend typically a lot more time at home than I did. Yeah, that's true. So because I don't because I, I ate a lot more processed food than I than I am right now. I'm not eating any processed food really. Mm -hmm. um, I've noticed a like an uptick in my health, ironically. That's and so great. I feel better. Um, which surprised me. I didn't expect that. Finances are more healthy, I would say. How much do you think, if you had to, if you had to, kind of make a rough estimate at this point of how much we've saved so far? I, I don't know. It's in the hundreds and hundreds, though. Hey, it's substantial because we have a big family. So every time we go to the town and go to Tim Hortons or whatever, or get or, pizza, or, or get pizza, it's. Pizza for us, just so you guys know, is usually 150 to 200 dollars to feed a family of our size, or any takeout, like whether it's Chinese or pizza or whatever. Yeah. So, yeah, and because we go to town, you know, often with kids' lessons and stuff, and we usually get a tea and whatnot, a sandwich <laughs> a or snack something, snack or a muffins or something. So but it doesn't. That stuff adds up. Anyway, I've these not, days, I've noticed a real. Um, the bank account is looking better. Yeah, you know, it's just, it just has doesn't have that steady drip in there all the time, which is nice. Like just knowing, like sort of having boundaries around your life, like having constraints, I guess is a better word oh, on your word. life. Mm -hmm. In that way, actually has a level of the sort of a decluttering in your mind, even maybe less for you because you're doing a lot <laughs> a lot <laughs> more of the a lot actual more creative work. yeah but i mean no uh, i know what you mean though i know what you mean like there's just there's constraints right so there's less so self -discipline there's, there's less options so it's like a, a, a form of sort of self-imposed self-discipline i guess like you said where um just because there's less options it's actually less stressful i don't actually think there's anything i've missed so far i i, I know it'll come for me it's been fresh vegetables, oh, for okay. sure. Yeah, no, that that's fair. Like tomato, having because tomatoes, we kind of, cucumbers. Kind of failed on her. On the greens, growing greens. Okay, so <laughs> I I um, not have your lack of skill, but we just kind of it's gone by the wayside. So. <laughs> uh, we ha I have a confession to make. I, I started a bunch of trays of microgreens down in my grow room, in anticipation of needing greens, and I went down there day couple of days ago and I realized that while I wasn't feeling well 
I hadn't watered them for a day and in a grow room where the temperature is pretty high and they're under grow lights, you can't, and there's only this much soil, you can't miss a day of watering and I killed them which is really unfortunate. I, I didn't know to check them. Yeah, so. I, I didn't say, I didn't have anyone else checking on them. I just, I just, it so just. that being said, we should go plant some. We should definitely go plant some. Um, having the sprouts has been good, but not having the fresh vegetables, I have definitely noticed. As far as just a preference, we're eating lots of fruits and vegetables every day, but it's all freeze dried or frozen or canned. And so it's just, it's just different. So I would say as far as food goes, that's what, outside of my really wanting to get some orange of pizza the other night, I would say that's the only thing that I've really noticed. I guess that's a way to think about what I was saying with kind of decluttering your mind, though, but I couldn't really find the words for it, but that's what it is. It's just like there's one last chore to do. Oh, because you're not having to go time. to the grocery it's store like, multiple times a week yeah, or like whatever. Yeah, several times, almost every time I was in town, I'd, have, I'd pick something up. Yeah, you know, that's right. We're short on this, or we need this, or can you grab this for this meal, or whatever. Mm -hmm. And it's just so we don't do that. We just work with what we have, and that's. And it is good. one less thing to think about as far as the having to. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's just There's something else I've noticed too that this this wasn't an expected thing, or I wasn't looking for it, but um, the the amount of waste we produce, like just that's the, very the amount true. of packaging. Um, just being the guy that often takes cle everything cleans the out, dump. cleans out the, the vehicles and stuff, like just the Tim Hortons cups and whatever, you know. That's a really good point, we, we, actually. We, we, the just, amount, we're just not producing, I bet you we're down to a quarter as much waste as we did. Yeah. Like not going to the grocery store all the time and, you know, constantly replenishing everything. We're just... It's not something I've thought about, but now that I'm thinking about it, even the amount of garbage bags that are coming out of the kitchen, because mm -hmm. we're, we're consuming things out of bulk, our bulk shopping, so it's just one large bag rather than a whole bunch of small ones. 10, we, 10 out of 10 so far. For, yeah. <laughs> for real, though. Yeah, I, definitely. I, I'm, I'm thinking that we should, I was saying this to you the other day, I think we should convert to like once a month shopping. Mm -hmm. I, and, and then just go buy bulk, like... It's less packages, less, we'll just go to Costco once a month or whatever and share that with you guys if you want to come. And I, I think that's a great idea. It actually, there's, there's a certain level of self-discipline that's involved in that that I like because that's kind of just where I'm at in, in my own personal journey at this mm -hmm. moment. And one of the goals that I had set for 2024 was around self-discipline and just being really conscious of my choices. And so mm -hmm. the idea of just having that same attitude of we're not going to be going to the grocery store in between those big shops and it, it's also going to make us have to plan better. Mm -hmm. But and also, what are you thinking about um, as far as kind of ordering in and eating fast food and that kind of thing moving forward? So I have some thoughts on that I, for myself. I just think that we should only do it if we're doing like a really planned thing. Like, right, no spontaneous. Like, like cut out all the impromptu Tim Hortons trips and yeah. Like if it's somebody's birthday and they want pizza, or whatever, or even I want to go out on a date and go to a restaurant and that kind of. We thing. have our anniversary coming up. Yay! Yay. <laughs> um, then I think that the, that's like a good opportunity to do something like that. Mm -hmm. But I think it should just be more deliberate. And Planned less spontaneous. in the budget, yeah. kind of, and I think that would make it actually more enjoyable too. To but know that that's coming. I in. think it's important that we keep 90% of the restraints on, though. I agree. Because the other thing is it does is it um, promotes creativity to sell the necessity. It's like you want to get out there and figure out how to cure some meat because you can't go by. Or homemade pasta, yeah. which is what we're going to do together today. <laughs> so we're going to make some fettuccine today. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, what I was thinking about as Dan was just talking is that I've shared this before, but cooking can, can be kind of a mundane task when you do it so much. I'm sure a lot of you can relate to that and it gets boring and it's not something that I would say is a, a passion of mine, but I have been enjoying it more, being a little bit more creative with it, trying things that I haven't tried before, 
making pasta. I've made pasta a few times over the years, but I'm really enjoying it. That's why I want to share share with you this recipe that I've kind of been concocting in my head to make a fettuccine carbonara for carbonara for today. Uh, so it's made it a little bit more fun to be in the kitchen, which I think is a good thing when you have to do something so much. The other much. thing you said, and I know, um, I know this is true, just from things you've said over the years, is that it adds just a lot of value to your actual farming activities, like the the work you put into producing the food. If we're not if we're not just going to go to the store and buy it, then all of a sudden what you're doing on the farm just <sighs> just has like double the value or triple the value. Oh, that's it makes, 100% it makes you true. Want to go out even more and garden and that is actually come true. up with some you know designer meat like not designer meat but like but making some fancy cured meats or and whatever, yeah. You know, like, that's totally true. That is, that is, I, I, I couldn't really articulate what Dan's just, Dan just articulated well, but that's, it, it's just created exactly like what he said, kind of more value in the work that I'm doing. I, there's always value in it because it's good, nutritious food and all of that, but it makes it feel more purposeful if we're making a concerted effort not to just go to the grocery store and buy things. And I'm not sure if that makes if that makes sense or translates to you what, what we mean, but yeah, I really mm -hmm. I really feel like that for sure. So we should probably get on with the rest of the day because we actually have a really crazy busy day. Dan has to go and pull his truck. Our, it's a skating rink out right now. I should just say that it is mm -hmm. it is a death crazy. trap outside right now. And when Dan was going out last night, he slid off of the yeah, side we, of the driveway. We went, we went to town. Yeah. And on the way back, we came down our driveway, which is two kilometers long, and it was fine. And then it was like 20, 20 30 minutes later, I turned around, went in my truck, and I had to go back to town to, to pick up something that I bought um, that I needed a truck for. And so I didn't expect there to be anything on the driveway because we were just through there. Right, it was, it was super icy, and a tree had come down, uh, like, must have been just minutes before and I'm broken across the driveway and so I hit the brakes and I kind of slid off the bank a little bit. Thank goodness. So I have kind of one front wheel off the bank and we have to go it's do like, that. It's literally like a skating rink. Should we bring so, these guys? Do you guys want to come with us? <laughs> we'll go. We can go and haul that out first and then come try. back. If you're, if you're comfortable being in the truck, are you? Yep. Yep. I can do that. To you, try and tow you out with the dump truck. Yep. But, I can do that. All right, well, let's go do that, and then we'll come back and hang out in the kitchen for a little bit. You ready for this? <laughs> no, you didn't make it very far. Oh my goodness, look at this ice. But it is starting, they're starting to get dirt on the road already, so that's good. So that was pretty lucky that all that stuff was there and the snowbank was here to be able to stop the truck so it didn't go actually over the bank. So that's a good thing. It's gonna come out, don't worry. Where, oh, this is, so just four low? Yep, we'll put it in neutral. I got, it's, in, it's in neutral, yep. Straighten the wheels though. You can try, other way. Oh. Yeah. Okay, I'll go put a chain on and then you'll feel it like start to tug. came off the ground. I don't know if you could see that. I was like, I am not going to this truck. Yeah. Yay! Yeah, you did it! That's awesome! I just wanted to show you how close this was to being really bad. So this is where Dan slid off right here and went up and over this. But if it had been just a couple of feet this way, he would have gone down right into there. So that was lucky, hun. I think the rock helped actually. I actually think the rock helped too. Uh, Yay! <laughs> and our like, dump truck's like name is Tigger. Pardon me? It like didn't even stutter. Oh, that's so, like, didn't even slide at all. <laughs> She's like, okay, yeah. Dan um, got this dump truck 
years ago he has a couple of them and he just put them all together to build one and it has been absolutely fantastic it's a dump truck slash plow truck so we're able to keep our driveway nice and clean so now he's going to run it up and down the driveway a few times because it's chained it'll break up all this ice or not all of it but it'll make it less deadly than it is now that's so awesome did you want me to drive the truck back like yeah. i'll have to go down the driveway turn around and come back this way pardon me you want me to back it up? Are you comfy doing that? Yeah, I'm comfy doing that. Okay, we'll see you guys back up at the house. All right, friends, we are back inside and we have some home cured bacon here that we're going to use for our fettuccine carbonara. I cured this bacon about three weeks ago now and I did show you the first stage of that process where we put the cure on, we put it in the fridge, we left it in the fridge for four days because these were really small pieces. I didn't do it for the full seven. That is common for curing. And I wanted to show you the next smoking stage of that, but unfortunately I got sick. So I did end up doing it, but I didn't have it um, in me or the energy to actually film the process, but it's very simple. I just took the meat out of the fridge and washed it off really well to get all that salt off, dried it off, let it air dry for a little bit, and then put it in the smoker with, I think I used hickory. <laughs> Hi, <laughs> I think I used hickory. Was it hickory that we used in the smoker or apple or cherry? <laughs> cherry, it was cherry, it was actually cherry um, that we used in the smoker. We have a new pellet smoker that we're really enjoying and I was able to fit 21 pounds of bacon in that smoker, which is much better than the smaller smoker that I was using before. And then I smoked it until the internal temperature was 150 degrees Fahrenheit, pulled it out, let it cool down, and then wrapped it up and froze it. And it is absolutely delicious. It smells so good, even like this. So we're gonna slice this up and get this frying. We are also going to fry up some garlic and some onion. I think I'm gonna add some onion into this. I'm just kind of winging this recipe, but doing a uh, carbonara, it's kind of an Alfredo with bacon basically and uh, it's pretty basic so I'll run you through what I'm going to do for that but we'll get started with getting the bacon cut first so that it can all come together really quickly once we have our pasta made. I have my knife nice and sharpened and our bacon. I actually prefer to slice my bacon up when it's partially frozen but going out to get the truck had this thaw out a little bit more than I generally like it, but that's all right. My knife's nice and sharp, so it's cutting through it pretty okay. Okay, you know what? You can never have too much bacon, so I'll chop up this little bit too. This has a lot of fat on it though, so we'll remove the extra fat. Okay, now, we, whoops, <laughs> now we have some garlic. I'm gonna get a new knife. Got my goggles on and I feel like we're gonna need more garlic than this. That is not enough garlic. So I'm not going to cook my garlic and my onions, um, nor am I going to add the cream right into the bacon. I'm gonna cook that separately, make my cream sauce over in this fry pan, and then I'll add the bacon to it because I don't want the bacon flavor. I want it to be there, but I don't want it to be overpowering. And if I make it right in with all the bacon fat, then it will be. So we're going to do our onions up here. First, like I always say, cook onions first and then add our garlic after, just because that garlic is tiny, but it also has a higher sugar content, so it tends to burn faster than the onions do. So we'll let those get nice and caramelized. Bacon's getting close. 
All right, friends, so I've done a little bit of a tidy on the kitchen. I have our pasta water over there ready to go and our onions and our bacon mixed together. And I used the fry pan that I fried the onions in again, not the ones with the bacon because I didn't want that really um, greasy, strong flavor of that bacon fat. So now we are going to make our pasta. And I was informed this morning over on Instagram that I say pasta in a funny way. <laughs> so you'll have to let me know down in the comments section if I say pasta in a different way than you say it. Apparently most Americans say pasta instead of pasta. So pasta is a very Canadian thing. I have two cups of uh, flour here on my counter and the sun's come out and it's just beautiful. And we are going to add a little bit of salt, a nice good pinch of salt to this. Roll up our sleeves and mix that up a little bit. Make our well and add our eggs. These are so fresh that they're warm still. So we're going to add three eggs. A couple of days ago, I tried doubling the recipe, or actually I think I might've tried to triple it and it uh, didn't work for me. It was really, really, really hard for me to knead. So I'm going to make two batches of it today. And a lot of people use their hands for this part, but I like using a fork to just slowly start incorporating this into our eggs. It was really helpful in my video where I was sharing making noodles when I made them in uh, for the chicken noodle soup. I had lots of really great suggestions and there's actually a new way that I'm going to try making it the next time that I make it that came from somebody's grandmother and I love grandma recipes, they're my favorite. That is quite different than this way of doing it. So we'll try that next time. But for today, we're just gonna stick with the way that I know. So this time I am making fettuccine noodles. So I am going to use my Atlas uh, machine over here for rolling out my sheets, but I'm actually going to manually cut them because I find with the blade uh, on here for cutting, it gums up pretty easily, gets plugged up and it's pretty hard to get it out. Uh, several people had mentioned adding flour to it, which I did try doing, but I just think cutting them by hand is probably going to be easier. So this is already feeling pretty much stiff enough. So I'm not gonna add all this, I'll just use this in my next batch. So we're just gonna knead, so I'm just gonna knead this until it's nice and smooth and then we'll let it rest. Make our next batch. All right, ball two. So that aside, we'll clean up our mess and then we'll be back at it in about 45 minutes. Okay, it has now been 45 minutes and our pasta dough has rested. So we are going to flour our counter and start doing the fun part. Okay, we are going to set this on the thickest setting, which is one. and run it through twice. Number two. So this being fettuccine, we are going to go pretty thin. There we go. Just about thin enough, I think. Let's 
What do you think, friends? Should we go thinner than that? I think that one's pretty good. So I just turned my water on back there so it's going to be ready when our pasta is finished. And the carbonara sauce that I'm gonna be using on it is very easy to put together. So it should come together very quickly after this, the noodles are actually made. Okay, we have a whole bunch of pasta. Now we're gonna cut it up. First, we're gonna sprinkle flour over it so it doesn't stick. And I want some nice long pasta. Really long. Whoops, <laughs> that's a bit too long. Okay, I can do these a little bit thinner because these are pretty thick pieces, but they look good. to do this like the pasta grannies here. <laughs> there we go. Perfect. That's so awesome. I really like making pasta. Look at this. So great. Okay, now we just have to wait for our water to come up to a boil. But while that's happening, we will get our sauce made. Let's salt our water. and taste test some bacon. Mmm. We have boiling water now. Add our pasta into our boiling water. I'm really excited about this homemade pasta. It's so good. That's what it's supposed to look like. Mm-hmm. I am out of eggs and my daughter just ran down to check and there were two eggs, so I'm supposed to use three, but two will do. Two is better than none. So we're just gonna let this cook up for a couple minutes. It won't take long to cook those noodles. In the meantime, we're going to separate out our yolks. Turn down our water a little bit. I definitely could have made these noodles much more narrow. <laughs> They're a little bit big, but that's okay. Okay. Need to add our cream in with our eggs. Turn on our element here that has our bacon and our onions in it. Need to pour our cream and egg mixture in there. And then let that thicken up a little bit. And our pasta is just about done. Look at that. So cool. Mm -mm. Are done. So we're going to go strain them. 
Our sauce has thickened up over here. So we're going to add a little bit of mozzarella cheese. So we're just gonna add our sauce right in with our pasta and gently give that a stir. Oh my goodness, my friends, this smells so good. Little pepper. This looks so good and it smells good. I hope it tastes as good as it looks and smells. Definitely have to make my noodles a little bit smaller next time. It does smell good, doesn't it? Oh my goodness. I think this may be the best thing that's come out of my kitchen recently. Oh my gosh. Mm. My friends, please, please, please make some homemade pasta. It is absolutely scrumptious. It is relatively easy. I guess it's a little bit time consuming with rolling it out and having to cut it up, but 100% worth it. So good. I am going to go sit down and enjoy this absolutely scrumptious meal. Oh my goodness. Please, please go try making pasta. If you have not tried it already, it is out of this world delicious and relatively easy. Uh, you don't need to have a machine like this. You can actually just use a rolling pin, which is what a lot of people do. And I think it might even be faster, to be honest, just to roll out one big sheet than to run so many through the small um, one. So the next time that I make it, I'll do that. I'll just do it uh, rolled out with a rolling pin and we'll see how that goes. But I hope that you enjoyed today's video and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye.